Welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So recently these ice maker, homemade ice maker videos have just blown up um, beyond my wildest dreams. There has literally been thousands upon thousands of comments, tons of awesome suggestions on how to improve this. People seem to uh, have a lot of interest in tinkering and DIY projects just like I do. So I'm taking a lot of your suggestions and the ultimate goal here is to build a second one of these after we use this as a test rig. So many suggestions that I need to start trying them immediately. But the last thing I wanna do is change so many things at once that we don't know exactly what made the biggest improvement on the ice machine. And these tests take 24 to 48 hours for me to weigh production and test things. So I'm gonna have a ton of tests over the next few weeks using your suggestions, and we're gonna start a new one today. So one of the first and most simple suggestions was, let me show you right here. I mounted two computer fans in this ice maker right here. Actually, I want to start unplugging them before I open this so it doesn't draw in hot air. That's something I need to trigger. A lot of people have mentioned putting in switches and other stuff. Um, so I have two big, I don't know, four or five inch cooler guy computer fans. And by the way, people have asked for this model. Oh my goodness. I'll just hold the camera up. It's so y'all can pause that and hold it there. Maybe the camera will focus. Huge number right there. All right, so the first suggestion was, because a lot of people curious about power consumption, what happens if we run just one fan? That's what I'm gonna do for the next 24 hours. We'll just start doing 24 hour tests since I have so many tests to do. So I'm only gonna run one fan over these ice makers. My bin is empty. I'm gonna catch all the ice, weigh it, and we'll compare it to the results that we had whenever I ran both fans. So we'll see if two fans are really needed. I already have an idea in mind to where we need to run a second fan. That'll be another test. A lot of people talk about getting heat off of the compressor and in that area because it radiates back up into the ice maker itself. So here's our first test. One fan, I'm gonna leave this other one unplugged. We'll uh, weigh this after 24 hours. I'll start the uh, timer now. And I, again, I have a ton more tests. We'll cover a few in this video, release it, and then cover a few more tests, release another video. So there'll be a bunch of shorter videos over the next few weeks testing a ton of theories and a ton of ideas. I just need to get them out of the way for some bigger tests that I have coming. Like I said, the ultimate goal is to build the ultimate DIY homemade ice maker that hopefully will have really good capacity. This is the single fan test all the way across. And it's been 24 hours almost exactly. I am also keeping track of temperature. So, just for curiosity, for some reason I cannot clear out the all-time high of the thermostat that is actually inside the freezer. But over the last, uh, see there it is, 82 degrees. That was when it was outside before I put it in. But over the last uh, 24 to 36 hours, we've ranged anywhere from minus three to positive one degrees on the outdoor thermometer, which is actually inside. And the building has been anywhere from 67 to 84 degrees ambient temperature inside the building. Now, I was only going to do this test for 24 hours to not make it take so long before y'all see another video. But it rained all day long yesterday. Sun never came out. That's going to affect my incoming water temperature as well as building temp. Today, it is bright and sunny. My pipes are going to heat up outside. My water is going to heat up outside. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, causes of reduction of ice over the last couple of months that I've noticed, incoming water temperature. We're gonna test that too. So I'm gonna run another 24 hour test right here on a super hot day, the exact opposite of what we seen yesterday and see if it affects ice production. My gut says that it will. So we're gonna wind up doing 48 hours again with one fan and we're gonna start a new test. A lot of people have mentioned putting a switch in. I don't know if I'm gonna do it on this model, but again, keep in mind the ultimate goal here is use this as a test piece, go over all of y'all's theories and ideas because it's just fun. I like crunching the numbers, get the data, I like tinkering. And then we'll do an ultimate build at the end of this video series and try to make the ultimate DIY freezer without breaking the bank. I just grab the ice off the shelf. The problem is we made so much ice that it fell out of this, it fell off the side of this and some was laying up on the shelf itself. So I'm gonna have to come up with a better way to catch it. But that's a good thing. Although today's data is 
really skewed, honestly. We've made so much ice, which is a great thing, that uh, I've got to find a new way to catch it. So we'll start trying to collect a little bit more accurate data later. Now, holy moly, probably the most aggravating comments I've been getting from people over the last few days is, do I not have a clue what a tear button is on this to zero out weight of a tray? Yes, I do. I just happen to know the exact weight of this tray and I've been deducting it. That's driving people crazy. So I'm just gonna start weighing in this pan because it's nice and domed and we should be able to see the weight. So I'm gonna put it on. We're gonna hit that tear button where you've zeroed it out. And we'll start dumping ice in here. I'm sure y'all can't see those numbers, but I dropped one piece of ice on the floor. I'm not concerned about it because it's nasty now. I'm not putting it in here. We're at 7.13 pounds. Let me write that down real quick. All right, we'll put the pan back on there. Tear it. Oh my goodness, I've got it figured out. Weigh the last of that ice. 1.488 pounds. So we'll just put 1.48. All right, that's 8.61 total pounds that we made in 24 hours, which if I remember correctly, is almost identical to with two fans running. Now the only caveat here is, it was nice and cool and rainy all day yesterday. So we're gonna do this test again with a single fan and if we wanna get the same weight, I think we have determined that we can take one fan out of there, save the electricity, and I've got somewhere else I wanna use that one fan. All right, so it's been 24 more hours with the single fan. So we've did two 24 hour tests, We'll take the average of both of those and uh, plug it in with the numbers. So I want to show y'all, here is the big baking pan that I put down here to catch any cubes that fell out. So 6.61 pounds, let me write that down. Now y'all see how that ice is freezing and sticking. That's because of the condensation of the room and this stuff is melting quickly. So a lot of people have asked about does the ice freeze in the freezer. I have yet to experience that after three months. However, I have a feeling by the time we're done with this set of tests, I am going to want the frozen ice in there only because I'm holding it out so long doing all these tests, letting it start to melt and get condensation on the outside, then I'm throwing it back in a zero degree freezer. So we'll, we're gonna test some of that theory too. All right, 6.61 plus 1.76. All right, that's a total of 8.37 pounds. So just slightly higher than it was yesterday. And it could have all been in the timing of catching that last drop. So we're still making a little over eight pounds with one fan, which is very close if I remember correctly. I have to go crunch all the numbers off camera from what we did with two fans. So at the moment, I don't know that we can justify running two fans, but we're not gonna rule that out just yet. One fan is, is making a big difference, a bigger difference than I was ever expecting. So now we're gonna start a next series of tests over two days. We're gonna put fans right up on the ice makers. I've had a lot of people request that. And there is an ice maker called a fast freeze ice maker. And apparently all it is is a similar model to these that has a fan mounted right on them that hits the tray. So I'm gonna get these as close as I can. I've just uh, kind of adjusted them to where they'll blow in between the uh, ice makers and really kind of hit the trays. And I'm gonna go back to running two fans on this and see if we can get production up. A lot of people have said it should make a huge difference putting them right up on it all right so you can see what i've done i've slid the fans over it's going to blow both of these are blowing in between the ice makers and really going to get up around the trays it's the best i can come up with on such short notice tuck both the wires out the back you can see i've had this open a while I'm building up a lot of condensation but ice is still nice and loose although i do expect us to start getting some block ice because i'm opening this every single day for so long so let's close this, turn on both fans. Now they're right up on this and uh, see if we can really shove some air in and around them. So I forgot to show that the kilowatt meter 
now that we have two fans running, it says we're pulling two watts. That's a bit disappointing because the fans say 0.5 watts on each of them, so we're pulling twice what I was expecting. All right, so it has been a full 24 hours with two fans running up close. This has been a very popular request down in the comment section on a lot of the other videos. Put the fans up very close. Try to have them alone on the trays. I have as best I could without completely redesigning the, uh, the fan holder. And a lot of people said you should see, I, I've seen people make bold claims up to 20% more increase. So another very popular request on the channel is to put a switch in to kill the fans. I'm gonna discuss some of the upcoming tests and things I'm gonna do at the end of this video. But for now, I've just been unplugging the fans anytime I open the lid so it doesn't draw and suck warm air in. The other issue I was having is if I left the fans running, every time I open this, it was pulling hot air in, building condensation and moisture on the fans, and then whenever I would close the lid and it get cold in there again, it would build up ice that the fan blades would start hitting. Ever since I've been unplugging the fans, that has not been an issue once over days of testing. All right, so this is looking promising, and I'm gonna have to be very careful to make sure I get good results, but it actually filled up so much over here it's kind of all fell off the sides. So I'm gonna make sure I collect all those ice cubes. There's less in here than normal, but I can see it's because they fell that direction. I did put a baking sheet underneath there, so I should be able to catch absolutely everything. All right, so to my eye, this already looks promising. Get my bowl on there. All right, it is zeroed out. Now it's zeroed out. See how much ice we have just in this. Okay, so we are at 6.41 pounds. Apologize for the lighting in here. All right, now we are at 2.48 pounds. Okay, so for the first test, um, we have 8.89 pounds. We're gonna run this again for another 24 hours just due to conditions in the shop and outside. But that's already a 6% increase versus when the fans were further back. Actually, when I was running a single fan, let's see here. So yes, that's correct. Actually, with two fans running and with a single fan running back here, we made the same identical weight. I can't believe that, 8.37 pounds. With two fans up close, we got 8.89 pounds, and I may try a single fan up close to see if we get the same exact results that it's producing just as well as one fan. Now we are increasing the wattage by one uh, watt right there because we're pulling two watt hours for both fans. But uh, once I give you all my price per thousand watts for electricity here, we'll discuss all that later. It's minuscule, it's absolutely nothing that adds up. All right, I wanted to show y'all an awesome feature of this kilowatt meter. It shows exactly how long it's been running. I unplug it and plug it back in every time I start a new test. So we're at 23 hours and 58 minutes, 59 minutes now. Pretty much exactly 24 hours. I'm trying to say consistent with this test. So this is the final day of two fans running up close. A lot of people have said, put them up close, your production should go up. Yesterday, we seen a slight increase with that. Today, Let's find out. I hope so. All right, we just hit 24 hours. So before I open this, I'm going to put down my kilowatt hour usage because I've been tracking that. And as you can see, every single thing other than the two fans I just unplugged has been running on this kilowatt meter. So this now gives us our full exact 24 hour usage total and we can calculate cost per pound. So everything overflowed again. We're making such good production. But, as you can see, it's all caught down here on this pan. So I'm gonna collect those few extra ice cubes that are hanging. It's easy to see, I cleared that shelf off yesterday before we started this test. And to all the people keep asking about this frost, keep in mind I'm opening this every day, multiple times a day, testing, recording. So it's gonna build up frost way quicker than it would at your home. All right, hit our tear function. Zero out the bowl, and uh, let's start weighing some ice. Lord, it is so hot out here, y'all. Today. Wow, awesome. So 7.11 pounds. I hope y'all can see that. Oh, 
Holy moly. Okay, 3.32 pounds. We've got some stuff to think about here. That is 10.43 pounds, a dramatic increase over two fans up close the day before, if I'm remembering correctly. All right, so this is the third day test and final test for two fans up close. And again, the reason we went an additional day testing on this was because the results we got yesterday were wild. Now, that was yesterday morning. This is run for a full 24 hours. We've had some other crazy weather. I ain't even gonna talk about it just yet until I see the results of this and where we're at and try to make sense of the impacts that weather's having. So if we look at the last 24 hours, it's about to click over there, inside the building. 73 to 97 degrees temperature swing in here. 97 inside. I think we got a lot of room for improvement for efficiency there. We're gonna go over some numbers at the end of this. I know this video is rocking on long. We're gonna discuss how to shorten them up, what kind of testing you'd like to see, intervals, everything else. But we're gonna go ahead and cover all the fan tests in this episode and the energy numbers coming up right now. All right, I lost two pieces of ice, so I'll take two out of there, throw in there. 7.02 pounds of ice. point one three for a total of nine point one five pounds okay so a quick little story about yesterday we're up to nine point one five pounds that's down from the over ten pounds we made the day before but that's well up from any of the other tests which were in the eight pound range so what happened yesterday started out extremely hot that's why you see 97 degrees on the thermometer then we had one of the worst thunderstorms I have had in a long time come through late yesterday afternoon. I'm talking 50 mile an hour winds, limbs and trees down, popping lightning, storming, cooled everything down dramatically, but much later in the day than what happened the day before, which is a very similar story. So long story short, our ice production has been up the last two days that it's been cooled off by thunderstorms. And there's two theories here. One, it's the shop temperature and the efficiency of the unit, although I doubt it. This is, this is, by this is telling me we're staying between minus three and positive two degrees in here. No matter how hot the shop gets, this is just gonna run longer and use more electricity. I don't think it's gonna make more ice. What I really think is being affected is the incoming water temperature. My big pumping well is out there baking in the sun, but on, when it cools down and rains off, it cools off the water in the well. It cools off the water coming to the side of the building, cools the pipes off, gets everything out of the sun. I think there is another huge increase that we can potentially get by incoming water temp. And I'm tempted for that to be the next series of tests that we do because I'm seeing the potential there. Um, let me go crunch some numbers, put all this up. Let's talk efficiency. Then I'm going to talk about the whole next series of tests that we're going to do. I've made a big list all based off your suggestions. Again, I know this video is rocking on long. We'll try to shorten them up as the series goes along. All right, so I just got done crunching the numbers and I'm not the world's best with math. So feel free to check me. I'm sure plenty of people will anyways. And as one viewer said, for all the haters, you're about to drink some Haterade. These numbers are a little more impressive than I was ever expecting. So I got quite a bit of data to go over here. We're gonna talk about it. Then I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. You can hit pause if you really wanna look at it so it doesn't sit there forever. Then I'm gonna go over the list of tests that are upcoming and uh, we'll wrap this video up. And I've already done started the next video, starting testing right now. So let's talk. We originally started out with this project made the way that it was with two ice makers, no fans, no modifications, no nothing. What started this whole thing, averaging 4.68 pounds a day. When we added the fans, we went up to 8.37 pounds a day, a 78% increase, huge increase. When I did one fan, exactly the same, 8.37 pounds. Now that's when they were spaced off. Two fans up close, I did three days of test, took the average of that, we increased up to 9.49 pounds. That was a bigger jump than I was thinking. So fans up close definitely make a difference. I think we can still play around with fan locations. As a lot of people said, get it on the bottom, get it on the mold, and we may get it even quicker. 
So that's where we're gonna wrap this video up. Two fans up close, all these numbers. We are at, we are at a 102.7% increase from where we started, back with two ice makers before the modifications. That's a heck of an increase, and we're just getting started. Now, here's all the power numbers. This is where people are gonna to have to eat some crow. I've heard some wild claims, and the one that still sticks in my head is a guy told me this was the stupidest idea ever, that it was gonna cost me about $3 in electricity to make $2 worth of ice. Oh wow, you're, you're all kinds of wrong. So I've got y'all some data for all the people that love data. I have been testing for the last week straight. The uh, water valves down there kick on for five to six seconds and pull 35 watts for five to six seconds. I tested that. Then I tested um, the ice makers themselves. They pull 220 watts when that heating element's on. I did not get to catch them to see how long that stays on. It's a few seconds, maybe a minute. That heats up the mold to release the ice cubes before the fingers flip it out. But that's 220 watts each ice maker for a few seconds, maybe 60 seconds. Uh, let's see here, 20, for in a 24 hour period, 0.125 kilowatts for just the ice makers. So you can break them down there, that's for two of them. Um, 0.13 kilowatt hours in a 24 hour period for two ice makers, two fans. And then for everything running as you see it, two fans, two ice makers, and the compressor in a 24 hour period in the heat of the summer now in Florida, I averaged 1.88 kilowatt hours. Absolutely nothing, 1.88 kilowatt hours. So, about to give you cost here. Let me grab my electric bill. I won't show you all that, it's got personal information on it, but this is gonna make you chuckle right here. All right, so my electric company breaks it down two types of ways. For the first 1,000 kilowatt hours I use, I pay 0.114 cent per kilowatt hour, so 11 cent, all right? Over 1,000 kilowatt hours, which I barely broke this past month, 0.138, it goes up. But it looks like looking at my bill, at least until we get the dead heat of summer, I stay under 1,000 kilowatt hours. That's for everything I run here, shop, camper, ACs, everything. So if we take 11 cent per kilowatt hour. <laughs> All right, let's crunch some numbers. So the cost to run this machine a day, 1.88 kilowatt hours for everything running times my electric bill, it cost me 21 cent a day to run my ice maker, 21 cent. Cost per pound of ice is, uh, let's see here, 0 0.022 per, uh, cent, 0 0.02 cent per pound of ice, practically nothing. And cost for a 20 pound bag, since we all compare those figures a lot in the comments, cost me 44 cents right now in the heat of summer. And I think it's only gonna get it more efficient, but 44 cents to make a 20 pound bag of ice that here recently, I was paying 3.99 a bag for here. Now, if you drive all around, I can find it for 2.50, 2.99 a bag. Yes, I understand that. But did you hear what I said? If you drive around it, $3 a gallon gas is what we're paying here. When you get to that Jiffy store, what do you do? You normally go buy junk food, everything else, stuff you didn't need because heck, you're already there. Plus you paid the cost of ice. The convenience factor along this whole project, I said if I just make ice for exactly what it costs me to go get it, you know, per bag, it was a good deal because it's convenience always here. I didn't know we were gonna get numbers like this. 44 cent for a 20 pound bag of ice made here at home in my shop, ready to go. Anytime I wanna ice down a cooler or go fishing, which is, weekly. I can't believe these numbers. That is absolutely awesome. These deep freezers are so efficient. You can't tell me that it costs you, let's see here, 21 cent a day to run a commercial ice maker that's constantly melting, constantly cycling, constantly kicking on and running. There's just no way. Now, I don't have one, so I can't say for sure, but we all know those are quite energy intensive. So this project's turned out to be awesome for me. Okay, I know we're getting long. Thank y'all, everybody that's made it to this point. If you love data and you love tinkering and all that stuff like I do, you've enjoyed this. So I'm gonna read off the uh, most common comments that I've been getting. Here's the next set of tests that I'm gonna run in no particular order. So here we go, we just went over energy usage. I have that on my list. I'm still gonna track it, but probably not every day. Once we get to the end and get the most production possible, we'll crunch the uh, numbers again and get our final true cost per pound. But as you can see now, this is laughable. I mean, I'm getting almost free ice in my mind. 
So here's the big one. I've told you every time I've noticed that the days are cooled off, my production seems to shoot up dramatically. Water temperature, huge debate in the comment section. Hot water freezes faster than cold water, I hear all the time. Cold water freezes faster than hot water, which makes sense in most of our mind, but there's, there's a whole lot going on behind the background there that we all don't understand. So I think cool, cooling the water, heating the water up maybe, incoming water temp should be the next test. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and start that test today to see if we can get production up. People ask for a fan on the compressor down there. They said that the compressor that's down in the bottom is generating heat up into the compartment. I think we can run that before long. And the tests are showing a single fan is producing just as much ice, at least in its current configuration. So I may stick another fan down there on the compressor. Uh, fans off switch. Right now I've been unplugging them. Keep in mind we're gonna build a version 2.0, ultimate DIY build after we get this thing making everything that it can and test all these theories. We're gonna make a nice clean unit and uh, that'll be my ice maker forever. That will become block ice and thermal mass. I'm glad I talked about that one because some people may say, hey, your ice is increasing because your thermal ma mass is increasing. I've been dumping ice every day. That's true, it may, but we, that one day increase, we went from eight pounds to 10.4 in one day. Thermal mass did not increase, but just a few pounds. There's no way it justified that much of a jump. But what happened that day was the weather outside was extremely cool. So I still think the data is good data, but we're kind of testing thermal mass now with it filling up. I personally don't think thermal mass is going to make more ice. I think it's going to make the freezer more efficient, less cycling. But some people have theories that the more stuff that's in there, the harder the freezer works to keep things cold. So maybe there is a theory to test there as well. See, we just got calls per pound covered, so I'll go ahead and delete that one. Insulation, boy, that's been another hot topic and I think a good one. I'm thinking about insulating the wall behind the freezer because it's just hot metal right now. I'm thinking about insulating the lid. I am not going to insulate the sides because these sides are extremely hot. They need to get heat away. That's kind of the way a condenser system works, if I'm understanding correctly. But the lid has absolutely nothing in it, and it's cool to the touch sometimes, which lets me know I'm losing energy out of there. Somebody had a good suggestion. A very thick thermal blanket on top. It's quick insulation to see. I was trying to find some to fit inside, so we got some ideas to play with insulation on the walls and on top right here. Also, I've considered running a box fan or shock fan to cool off the shell of this entire unit, and uh, we'll see if that makes a difference. But there's, there's energy usage, and that makes your cost per pound go up. Probably one of the next easy ones to test that I'll do in this video, everybody says turn the freezer to wide open. It'll go to minus 10. I've already tested that before. That's 10 more degrees colder. The colder a freezer, the more ice it should make, but your energy usage should go up because the compressor will technically run longer and has to maintain that temp. We're gonna test that. That's an easy one, it's a simple knob. Insulate water lines, that may be part of the water test. Um, ice cube size adjustment, I'm gonna dig around in these again, but I did not see it the last time I took the end caps off. We'll look at that. Uh, people have asked to actually freeze ice in the bottom or to defrost it. Some people say the frost helps, some people say it doesn't. Man, everybody's back and forth 50-50 on a lot of these comments. Let's see what else we have here. Pull cold air off the bottom with fan tubes. We may get into that down the road. Um, people have said increase your filtration, try to figure out how to make clear ice, it'll freeze better. That'd be a tough one to do and quite expensive, time consuming to get truly clear ice. There's a lot more involved in that. Removing the moisture, stuff in there to remove moisture like socks full of uh, rice, things like that. We'll look at that. People have asked about bacteria buildup, UV lights. There's things we can test, but that doesn't really help us with the production right now. And other people have asked to reverse fans to kind of make a, a circular effect in there. I may test that right here as well. So that's just some of the tests coming up. Once I see a comment get stated over and over and over by y'all, I jot it down, and if it's worth testing, I'm gonna test it. Yes, this is an ice maker. Some people are wondering, wow, this is so stupid. People are watching probably a 30 minute long video now. I'm just guessing by the time I'm done making all this, what's going on? Well, look at the conversations that it sparked. Look at the data, the interest. We're talking about thermodynamics and things that's beyond an old homemade ice maker. So it sparked up awesome conversation. It's a fun project. I really look uh, forward to it and get something useful at the end of the day. I could use tons of ice. You see all this sweat? You see the temperature up there on that thermometer? This is hot Florida. I use ice all the time. So it's a win-win at the end of the day. Thank y'all so much for your comments, for watching, for the support. Y'all have been awesome. 
And uh, I'll catch you all in the next vid video, and I'll keep producing daily updates until this thing's full. Then I'm digging and using my ice, and we may test some of the thermal ma uh, mass theories as well. Cannot speak, y'all. All right, catch you on the next video.